Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome to my channel, The Southern Seamstress. If you're new to my channel, thanks for dropping by and if you're a regular viewer, welcome back. I'm really excited about today's video. It's one that I've been working on for the past several weeks. This is going to be another gift idea video and this time all the gift ideas have one thing in common and they are all things that you can use in the kitchen. When I was making my list of all the things I wanted to include in the video, it was getting rather long. So because of that, this is actually going to be a part one video. And then in another few weeks, I'll have part two. In this video, I have a couple of items that I've already shared in a few other videos, but I feel like I need to include them because they seem to be such popular items. So without further ado, let's get started. The first pattern I want to share is the Popular Bowl Cozy, and the pattern I used is by Apple Green Cottage. I shared this in my Christmas gift video. I made some for each of my children. These cozies come in handy when you're eating a hot bowl of soup or a bowl of chili. My bowl cozies are microwave safe. Uh, to make them microwave safe, you want to make sure you use all cotton uh, materials, cotton fabric, cotton thread, and the batting. And the batting I use is called wrap and zap. I ordered mine from uh, walmart.com because they had the best price at the time. I know Joann's carries it and I believe you can get it on Amazon also. I like Apple Green Cottage's uh, pattern because instead of just having you cut out a square and then marking off your darts, um, she gives you a template that looks like this and it already has the area where the no uh, darts are notched out. So when you fold these together and do your little dart, you don't have to trim anything and you don't have to actually mark anything on your pattern because it's already cut out. So I really like that. The only thing I did different uh, with my bow cozies was I would added a, a couple of lines of extra top stitching because you're going to take your first your outer layer and you're going to kind of quilt it to a layer of batting and the inner layer also has a layer of batting that you're going to sew together with it. So instead of just having like one simple cross I add a couple of extra lines and I think that they don't show up too well here but it gives it just a little bit more shape and stability on the bottom. They are reversible and I think they look really cute. If you're making it for a gift you could find out what colors that person likes to use in their kitchens and then use some fabrics that will match their kitchen. So that's the Bowl Cozy by Apple Green Cottage. The next pattern I also mentioned in a previous video and that is a casserole cozy. And the pattern I used was by the Birch Cottage. Now this is a free pattern and also the Bowl Cozy pattern is a free pattern also. The Birch Cottage has two different pattern sizes available. One is for the regular 9 by 13 casserole and the other one is an 8.5 by 8.5 square. And then if you had another size casserole you could easily just lengthen uh, the pattern or shorten it or widen it a little bit. So it's very easy to customize. She gives you a free template and this is what it looks like. This would be half of it and you just place it on the fold. Uh, she already has her darts cut out also. So you just stitch those together and on these two sides and then on the opposite sides. And you're basically going to quilt the batting just like the bowl cozies to the front piece and the back piece. And then you're going to put them together and sew around the edges, leaving a gap and then turning it. You want to press it really well and then top stitch around uh, the outside of it. If you go to the Birch Cottage website, she also has some free printable uh, care labels for the casserole and also for the bowl cozies that you can print out and then cut apart and then put with your cozy if you're giving it for a gift and then the recipient will know exactly how to take care of it. I think for both of these uh, patterns they are free and all you have to do is sign up for their email and then once you sign up for the email you'll be able to get the pattern. My next kitchen gift idea is the 
ice cream pint cozy. I think it's really cute. Now this cozy is basically made the same way as the bowl cozy. This certain pattern is by Crafty for Home. When you go to Crafty for Home's website, they give complete instructions on how to make this cozy. I think they do have a printable template, but it costs a few dollars. So it is free if you just, you know, follow the directions. It starts out with a 10 inch square, and then they tell you how to mark off the dark. So I took some a 12 inch square of cardstock that I had, and I just followed the directions of how to mark out the dart areas. And then I just cut out my dart areas, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So this is what you'll come up with after you follow the directions. And if you were to purchase the template, this is what it would look like also because she gives a picture of it. So you're gonna make it just like the bowl cozy where you're going to do uh, two pieces of fabric and then two pieces of the batting. Now besides using this for a pint of ice cream, you can also use it for the little individual oatmeal containers. And you can also use it for the mac and cheese little bowls. They both fit into it. And of course, the pint of ice cream. Now, I had did buy a pint of ice cream to make sure it fit, but I haven't finished the ice cream, so I didn't want it to sit around here melting. So I'm just gonna leave the ice cream in the freezer for now. So you're basically just going to do this just like a bowl cozy, and if you do want to be able to put in the microwave, say with the oatmeal or the macaroni and cheese, then you're gonna to wanna to use the 100% cotton batting, like the Rapids that begin. And you would just do the two layers of fabric, of cotton fabric, and then the two layers of batting. And then you're gonna, you know, sew your batting to your fabric pieces. And on the website, she gives complete instructions. And then after you get your uh, batting attached to your fabric, you're gonna do your uh, four darts and then you'll be putting the two pieces together. I had a little bit of a problem turning this cozy right side out because I normally leave an opening a little bit below the tip and then just right above the dart area. Now this area is pretty small on this cozy and so I wound up kind of ripping it back to the point. So when I was top stitching the edge closed, I had to fix my point back. It is a pretty uh, snug fit. I think you could make it with maybe a slightly bigger square, like a 10 and a half inch, and still do the same measurements for the darts. And that would give you a little bit more wiggle room. So I've, I think if I made it again, I might make it slightly bigger, or I would probably make my gap go down a little bit past the dart area, just to allow a bigger opening to turn it. But I think this is really cute. Now you could also put some non-food items in these cozies. I know one of my viewers said she had a friend that put like uh, spices or potpourri in her bowl cozy and just set it you know, on a table and it made the room smell really good. I guess you could also put things like sewing clips or spools of threads or bobbins. And I also saw a picture of one of these with a little potted plant in it. I guess you just wanna make sure when you water your plant that it wasn't gonna go through and soak uh, your the bottom of your cozy. So that was the ice cream pint cozy. I have a couple more cozies, and then I also have a couple of things at the end of the video that aren't cozies. The next cozy is also by Crafty for Home, and it is the pie plate cozy. So on their website, they give complete instructions on how to make the pie cozy. And if you go by their instructions, I think it will fit a nine or nine and a half inch pie plate. So you're going to start out with a large square and she gives the dimensions of the square and she also will tell uh, the measurements for the darts. But the construction is basically like the other cozies where you're going to attach a layer of batting to each of the layers of fabric and then you'll do the darts and then you'll put the right sides together. And then she gives a diagram and shows how to cut this curve right here. So you're gonna leave two corners untouched and then you're gonna be curving and cutting away two of the corners. So it's real simple to do and if you use the all cotton materials, you'll be able to put this in a microwave if you need to. So that's the pie plate cozy 
by Crafty for Home. My last cozy gift idea is also by Crafty for Home, and it is a dinner plate cozy. Now, this is basically just like the pie plate cozy, except that you're not gonna be cutting two of the corners away. Now, this one does have some darts, but they're very small darts, so it just gives it a little bit of dimension for your plate. Now, for this one, I chose to kind of do a patchwork design where I put four squares together and then cut out my larger square. So I've got four squares on this side, and then I just did this side solid. I think it looks cute like this, or solid on both sides. So if you have a favorite quilt block pattern, you could also do that as long as you make it big enough um, to cut out a 12 inch square from it. So I tried it out uh, with just this plain white dinner plate and this dinner plate is just a little over 10 inches. So you have just a little bit of uh, the cozy sticking out on each of these sides, but you could always make your square bigger if you have really large plates or if you're uh, doing it for like a luncheon plate, then you could just uh, make a smaller square. So that does it for all the cozies. I didn't realize there were so many cozy patterns out there uh, until I was searching on Pinterest for some ideas. My next kitchen gift idea is a reusable bowl cover. And I've made a couple from two different websites. The first one I made is very simple and it's uh, from Hearth and Vine. What you'll do for this bowl cover is measure your bowl and then uh, cut out a circle of fabric. I think that's about three and a half inches wider than the top of the bowl. And for this one, you don't need any bias tape. All you do is turn under the edge. I think it's like a half an inch and then make a little casing, leaving an opening, and then run a length of 1 4 inch elastic around it, and then draw up your elastic so that it fits snugly around the bowl, but it's not too tight. So join your elastic, and then top stitch the opening where the elastic went into. So very simple. Kind of reminds me of like a shower cap. So, and that's how this bowl cover looks. The second bowl cover pattern I tried is called the Purple Potluck Bowl Cover, and it is by the Cottage Mama. For this bowl cover, you're going to measure the top of your bowl, and then she says to add two inches to the circumference. And then you're either going to take some self made bias tape or some already prepared bias tape and you're going to attach it uh, to the edge of the circle forming a casing where you're going to run fourth inch elastic around. So I made the first one making the uh, fabric two inches wider than the bowl and this is how it looked. It doesn't overlap too much on the sides so I think I would like it better if it overlapped a little bit more. So I redid the pattern again, and instead of just adding two inches to the circumference, I added four so that I had an extra two inches on each side. And I had cut my own bias tape. So that's how it looks with the sides coming down a little bit uh, longer. I kind of like that better. And I think it, it does look cute with a coordinating bias tape. So those two were by Hearth and Vine and the Cottage Mama. Now I came up with my own bow cover design. I thought it would be cute if I did a kind of a pieced design. So what I did was I took strips. I made my strips two and a half inches wide and I had fourth inch uh, seam allowances so it finished out the strip with for two inches. So I put seven of these together giving me 14 inches across. I also put like a little decorative zigzag stitch along each of the seams just to give it a little bit more detail. And then what I did was cut out, I think this is a 14 inch circle, and then I did a matching solid piece of fabric and I put them together, right sides together, and made like a half inch casing around. So I stitched it uh, really close, about an eighth of an inch from the edge, and left a little opening for the elastic. And then a half inch away from the edge, I did another row of top stitch all the way around. And then inserted my elastic and got it to the width 
that I wanted around my bowl and then just stitched up the elastic and finished out that little bit of top stitching on the side. So I think it turned out really cute. And so this is how it looks. Another idea I was going to do, but I didn't quite get it finished, was I was taking just a solid piece of white fabric and then putting a little uh, machine embroidery design in the middle. I'm always kind of looking for something to put all these embroidery designs on um, that I purchase. I know some of you are fans of designs by Juju and they do have a special this month. 15 designs for $15. So I did uh, pick out 15 designs and a lot of their designs, they're not just one design. When you pick out the design, it may be a set. So there's like four or five different designs in that set. So now I just have a ton more of embroidered designs. So you can take some of those and just stitch it on like some solid fabric and then you can display it on your top of your bowl. I like to use um, their sketch designs, which are designs that aren't as dense as some of the other ones. And they just seem to do better, like on a tea towel or a lightweight uh, fabric like a quilt or cotton. Of course, I do stabilize uh, the back of it. So that's some reusable bowl cover ideas. I also think uh, this is a good design with the two layers because it kind of keeps out odors better because sometimes you might have something in your refrigerator uh, that's got a strong smell. You want to keep what's in your bowl from absorbing that odor. So I think having the two layers works out really well. My last kitchen gift idea is a pan or bowl protector and I've got two different versions to share with you. The first pattern I have is from We Like Sewing and they call it their Far Out Floral Fabric Pan Protector but you could also use it for bowls. And this one is made from felt. I think they're really cute. When you go onto the website, they have a template for you that you can print out and it's free. And they have a small flower, a medium flower, and a large flower. This is the small one. And you can make it from the nine by 12 inch squares like you would find at Hobby Lobby or somewhere. Now for the medium size, you need like a 12 inch square of felt. And I didn't have any of those on hand, so I just made the small one. And then for the large ones, they um, say you need like a 20 inch square of felt. But basically, you're just cutting out your uh, flower template in two different layers. And then you're just putting those layers together. You're not turning or anything. You're just putting them together and top stitching around the edges. And then they say to make like two different sizes of circles and you can just do one or you can do two. I thought it was cute with two. And if you're looking for a template for circles, you can just put that in your search field on, on Pinterest. And there's a lot of different websites that just has free circle templates of any size circle that you could think of. So for this one, I think I have like a three inch and a two and a half inch circle. Now in their, their instructions uh, to attach the circles to the flower, uh, they say you can take some embroidery floss and then just make some like little French knots. What I did was I just found a stitch on my sewing machine. I think it's supposed to be like a little eyelet stitch or, or it's just a little very skinny oval. It may have been like in the buttonhole section and I just went around randomly and uh, put some of those in. But I think this is really cute. So you can, uh, when you're stacking your skill, say your skillets or your pans, you just put this in the bottom and then lay the next one on top. Of course, if you're trying to protect your bowls, then you would just put this in your larger bowl and then you could set your smaller bowl on top. And that's what I'll probably use mine for is to help protect my bowls because I like to uh, stack my different size mixing bowls together and most of them are glass or pottery and this will keep them from getting chipped. The second pan and bowl protector that I made is a pattern from Hello Sewing. Now it's made from fabric and they give you the template on their website. And when you cut it out, it's gonna look like this. And you're just gonna do a top layer and a bottom layer. Now these, you don't, you're not gonna be microwaving. So what I did was I just put a layer of kind of a fleecy interfacing 
in between them just to give it a little bit of padding. It doesn't really need much. Uh, so this is just like a thicker interfacing in between here. So I, I did iron a layer of interfacing on both of the fabric pieces. And then I just put them together and sewed around them and left an opening and then turned everything. And then do a little top stitch around the side. So I think these are really cute too and helpful. So you can put these in the bottom of like a skillet or a, pan or a pot or a bowl. Their template also includes three different sizes. So they have lines uh, for small, medium, and large. So depending on what size, the little petals or spokes are gonna be longer or shorter. And for this one, I think I made a medium. So that's how big that is. So I think that's really cute. So that does it for all the gift ideas for this video for part one. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be having part two in a couple of weeks. Now part two, I can tell you won't have any cozies. All the cozies were in this video, so there won't be any cozies. And I think there won't be any items that I've already had in other videos. I think they'll all be completely different. So I think you'll really enjoy them. So I'll probably have that video out in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna to try to make up um, a cardigan in between. I wanna get a few more of my winter patterns made up before spring gets here. It's been feeling quite like spring all week here, but I'm sure we'll get another blast or two of cold weather. So if you enjoyed the video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. As always, I love to hear your comments and I would love to hear which gift idea you like the best. So until I see you in my next video, take care and happy sewing.